Tens of thousands of you have voted for the hymn you love the most. So on today's Songs of Praise, we're counting down the top ten to the UK's favourite hymn. We have amazing star performances from the length and breadth of the country, including Daniel O'Donnell in Northern Ireland, Fairground Attractions' Eddie Reader in Scotland, the Kingdom Choir on the Isle of Wight, and Catherine Jenkins in Wales. Here in Leicester's De Montfort Hall, we have lots of star guests, including Leslie Garretts and Britain's Got Talent winner Colin Thackeray. They'll lead more than a thousand voices as we count down the top ten hymns which received the most votes. And I'll be singing along too with my good friend Russell Watson. Plus, we have a wonderful orchestra conducted by Ken Burton, the fabulous De Montfort University Gospel Choir and Songs of Praise Young Choir of the Year, Perfect Pitch. Welcome to Songs of Praise and the UK's favourite hymn. A warm welcome to Dorford Hall here in Leicester for this very special edition of Songs of Praise. Many thousands of you have voted for the hymn you love the most. So on today's show, we're counting down the 10 most popular to the UK's favourite hymn. But before we begin our countdown, what is it that makes hymns and hymn singing so special? Well, to tell us what she thinks, please welcome to the stage one of the stars of Hollywood's blockbusters, Black Panther and Venom. It's Shopi Aluko. <laughs> A Hollywood superstar, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and what's even better than that, it's a Hollywood superstar that loves her hymns. I do. I absolutely love my hymns. My life has just been a faith journey. And whenever I just don't have any words to pray, I just go to a hymn. It just, it just comes into my head. And then I just feel this calm and this just protection from the Lord. And it's incredible because I schooled here. I lived in England for many years. And Actually, being here, this was my mother's favorite show. Um, I didn't want to tell you that, but I, I'm getting very emotional about it. And so I know that my parents probably colluded with God to have me here. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> we can't have you here without talking about... Wakanda. Black Panther. Yes. Uh, what was it like being in that iconic film? Oh, Alad, it was incredible. We actually had church on set a number of times. We right. sang hymns How and worship the Lord and it was just beautiful and uh, it was just I can't say enough about it the fact that there were Christians in set and um, we all got together and we're still friends till now. How brilliant. Yes. Well we are thrilled that you're here this evening aren't we ladies and gentlemen? Yes. A round of applause for Shoki Aluko. Thank you. Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> So we begin uh, with number 10, an incredibly popular modern anthem, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, also known as Here I Am Lord, by the American songwriter Dan Schutz. Uh, one of my clear memories of I, the Lord of Sea and Sky was sitting at my desk with this blank piece of staff paper in front of me, saying a prayer to God, where do I begin? Somehow I was led to those stories of the call of the prophets, Jeremiah, Samuel, Isaiah, and the Old Testament. And as I read those stories, uh, it, it clicked for me. I believe that, that Here I Am, Lord, is popular because of the, the relationship that it sets up with a very personal God. You know, some of the hymns that we write are about God. Here I Am, Lord, is actually uh, formed and fashioned and structured as, as a conversation. It's a dialogue between God and us.
That was absolutely wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're really blessed today because we're about to hear from the man who wrote our next hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, that's been voted number nine. And we have one of the country's top sopranos to lead the congregation in performing it. Please welcome to the stage, David Evans and Leslie Garrett. Lovely to see both of you. Uh, first things first, congratulations for being in the top ten. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the first time that any choir or any colleagues of yours performed it? We had a, a big Christian conference coming up that my church was involved in, and I thought maybe I might see if people want to sing it there. So I performed it to a, to a group of musicians, and I was just absolutely stunned by the response. Um, half the group were, were kneeling and, uh, and several were, were weeping gently. And I thought, gosh, this is a bit scary. Because <laughs> I'd never really experienced anything like that before. It was then that I began to realize that maybe I'd written actually something that, that had a bit of, bit of power to it. Well, uh, one of the world's greatest voices is about to sing it, especially for us. Um, how do you feel, Leslie, when you're performing this hymn? Oh, truly inspired. It's a, a wonderful piece. You've written an absolute gem. I love the way the words and the music build. You start with the, the presence of the Lord and then the glory and then the power of the Lord. And by the end of the song, you're in no doubt that the Lord is going to fix everything. And I've known you for years, Leslie. You do enjoy singing a hymn. I do enjoy singing a hymn. <laughs> I do, absolutely. And this one, it ticks all the boxes. Without further ado, thank you ever so much for David Evans and to lead us now, the one and only Leslie Garrett.
At number eight is a well-loved traditional hymn with a message of forgiveness and redemption. Amazing Grace is definitely one of the UK's favourite hymns. Here's a new version of this timeless classic performed in Scotland by the Glaswegian singer-songwriter Eddie Reader from Fairground Attraction. And it's a hymn which really means a lot to her. It's a spiritual song, but you don't have to belong to any kind of religion or sect to love it. And the energy in it is about how weak we are and how we all need a little bit of help sometimes. And I, I find it in that song more than any other hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rain. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did. Well, ladies and gentlemen, isn't this fantastic? And at number seven in our countrywide poll of the UK's favourite hymns, I have to declare an interest as a Welshman, because you've chosen a hymn that's synonymous with the land of song. It is Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, and it's the favourite hymn of comedian and former choir boy, Lloyd Griffiths. How are you, mate? How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. With a name like Lloyd Griffith, you've got to be Welsh. I'm not Welsh, no. It's very weird. I'm from Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. I know. Very, yeah, very... But you were a choir boy. I was a choir boy, yeah, uh, in uh, St James Parish Church in Grimsby from the age of seven to, well, when my voice broke. OK. Um, and you used to sing Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Well, it was one of the first hymns that I remember singing in church. And the thing that I remember about it, it was that the altos and basses getting very happy about it, because it's always the sopranos and tenors that get the glory in the desk count. And then the altos and basses, as soon as this comes in, they're kind of like, you know, you can see the shoulders are going back for the little desk <laughs> It's my moment. End. It is their moment. Um, so that was one of the first uh, hymns I remember singing. Uh, and it's synonymous with sporting events too, of course, not just the rugby. Well, not just the rugby. I remember going to Blundell Park, home of Grimsby Town FC. Um, didn't get that a cheer that time, did it? OK, great. <laughs> right. um, and then when Grimsby scored, the chant was, you're not singing anymore, but to the tune of Come Ronda. And I was like, what's going on? This is, we sing this in church. What's, what's happening at Park? 
you know, it's such a, it's such a lovely hymn. It's got amazing words, but for me, it's, it's, that, it's that melody that just really powers it towards the end. Good on you. Ladies and gentlemen, the comedian, Lloyd Griffiths. And here is Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer from St David's Cathedral in Pembrokeshire, led by the Welsh tenor, Wynne Evans. This hymn, voted in at number six, is generally thought of as a patriotic hymn, but in fact the words were rewritten back in 1918 to reflect the devastation and huge loss of life in World War I. And the final verse points us to the other country of heaven and eternal life. If you haven't already guessed it, our next hymn is I Vow to Thee My Country. And here to sing it is Chelsea Pensioner and Britain's Got Talent winner, Colin Zachary. They love you, Colin. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. This is a great hymn to sing, isn't it? It is, yes. How do you feel when you're up here on stage singing something like, I vow to thee my country? Well, it sort of reminds me of the time when I first joined the army, because one takes a vow to serve queen and country, and it sort of sums the whole thing up, really. Do you feel that there's a connection between you and God when you're singing it? Yes, of course, of course. And it's since Joan, my wife, passed away, which is the reason I'm now in Chelsea, um, I've sort of gone, gone back to church, if you know what I mean. Um, I, fi I feel the need, and singing songs like this helps. Well, we're delighted that you're here tonight, uh, aren't we, ladies and gentlemen?
question the love that stands the test that lays upon the altar the dearest and the best the love that never falters the love that pays the price the At number five is a very moving and familiar hymn, The Beautiful Abide With Me. It's a prayer in musical form, and we're about to hear a poignant performance by the Kingdom Choir on the Isle of Wight. Their inspirational leader, Karen Gibson, explains why it's special to her. Abide With Me is one of my favorite hymns. I've grown up singing it all my life in church, and although it's associated with funerals and remembrance, it's actually a song of worship and a song of hope and of great anticipation, looking forward to the afterlife with Jesus. Abide with me, fast for even time. The
At number four in our top ten is the ever-popular hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. And it's the favourite of our very own Catherine Jenkins. Before we hear her leading the congregation at St David's Cathedral in South Wales, here's Catherine to tell us why this particular hymn means so much to her. It's a hymn I love to sing as a chorister, I think, purely because of the beautiful melody. But as I've got older, I really appreciate the sentiment more than ever that no matter how busy and hectic our modern lives are, God's voice can still cut through and speak to us in a calm and tranquil way. In third place, we have the wonderful modern hymn, In Christ Alone. Written in 2000, this hymn has lyrics that continue to resonate with Christians throughout our country and indeed the world. And I'm delighted we have Stuart Townend, one of the hymn's co-writers, here today. Welcome him onto stage. Stuart, you're in the top three. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> wow. I'm really surprised it's even in the top ten. So it's, there's such amazing hymns that have been sung. You already. must feel so proud. Yeah, I mean, I think feel humble because um, it is a modern hymn. So it's kind of competing with a lot of much, much older, more established hymns. So it is amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And where did it come from, Stuart? <laughs> oh, gosh. I wish there was a really exciting story, but there isn't. I met uh, the co-writer, Keith Getty, and uh, we met in a, at a conference, and then he said, I've got some hymn tunes that I want to send you. So he sent me the hymn tunes on a CD, because this is kind of, you know, not really You're internet days. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, and so he sent it, and the first tune on it that he was just playing on the piano, I just thought, actually, this is a really, really good tune. Well, you mentioned Keith Getty. He now yep. lives in Nashville. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us this evening, but he has sent us this lovely message. Hi there, everyone, and greetings from Nashville, Tennessee. We are honored to be included on this illustrious list. The true story of In Christ Alone is I actually found an unpaid electricity bill in my office, and on the back of it, I'd written a melody, and I played it and recorded it and sent it to Stuart, and a couple of months later, we had In Christ Alone, and the rest is history. We hope all of you have a fantastic evening. We wish we could be there, and we hope you can know the heights of love and depths of peace found in In Christ Alone. Yeah, many thanks to Stuart and Keith out in Nashville, of course. In Christ Alone is the most modern hymn in our top ten. 
and we have a really special performance by none other than Daniel O'Donnell on the Causeway Coast in Northern Ireland. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand come now to the second most popular hymn in the UK, and it is How Great Thou Art. I know, what a shock, eh? Uh, this worship song has Swedish origins, but uh, became popular worldwide in recent decades when Billy Graham used it in his evangelical rallies. Performance poet John Cooper Clark is one of its fans. Please welcome him. <laughs> so, How Great Thou Art, why do you love it so much? Uh, well, obviously, my first exposure to this wonderful hymn was uh, on the album Peace in the Valley by uh, Elvis Presley. You chose Elvis's version for uh, Desert Island Discs. I did. Did you not know I've recorded it? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I don't mind playing second fiddle to Elvis. Nice try, Junior. <laughs> yeah, nice try. <laughs> uh, you're a wordsmith by trade. What is it about the words that really make an impact on you? Many songs are referred to as being poetic, but only in hymns, I think, do you find lyrics that will stand alone as poetry. And this is a perfect example of that. Although it's written in the first person, I think it, it perfectly conveys the universal message of Christianity. 
Well, I'm looking forward to you singing along with it now. A uh, round of applause, please, for John Clark. <laughs> well, How Great Thou Art is also my favourite, so I hope you enjoy my take on this beautiful hymn. So this is it, the time to reveal the hymn you voted as the UK's favourite hymn. But first, please welcome historian and Christian professor Helen Bond. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Hello. Come you and join me. Before we hear the number one hymn, uh, without giving too much away, what can you tell us about it? <laughs> well, it started out as a poem by uh, William Blake in the background to the um, Industrial Revolution. And it starts off with the legend that Jesus came to England as a young boy with his uncle, Joseph of Arimathea. And it ends with a great rousing chorus to, to change England, to change the world. Wow, you've probably guessed what it is. <laughs> if you haven't, the UK's favorite hymn is...
It's Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. <laughs> a, few, uh, a few gasps in the audience there. They couldn't quite believe it. Um, powerful words, though, eh? Yes, and powerful words, but also powerful tune, because it was really when C.H. Uh, Parry wrote the, the music for it in 1916, during the First World War, that it really took off, and people really got behind it. And, of course, it's also the anthem of the W.Y. Of course, Jam in Jerusalem. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, fascinating stuff. Thank you very much, Helen. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice to see you. Many thanks to our special guests, to all of you here in Leicester and you watching at home. We hope you've enjoyed this very special edition of Songs of Praise. Here's William Blake and Hubert Parry's masterpiece that is Jerusalem. <laughs> Ah!